Howdy folks, welcome to Plumbing with Tim. Today we're on location in beautiful Melbourne Beach, Florida. Today we got a call down here at a residence uh, about a well pump that they believe heated up and it melted the pipe. So let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Have you ever seen a pipe implode like that? That's a one inch piece of PVC coming out of the pump. Look at that. Look what it did on the top side. It swelled it. Wow. So that's all got to come out of there. I'm going to show you a solution to try to prevent that from happening again. All right, so I got a partner with me here, and he's going to show you what he's going to do first. We're going to end up taking and cutting the top part of this pipe out. As you see how swelled that is down in there. That's one inch PVC there. Wall. Try to get that out of there. See if we can close in a little bit on that. There we go. Alright, perfect. Alright, we're gonna make that other cut right there by right where the pipe heated up and, and did that. So we can get that whole piece out of there and redo it. So next is going to take the thread of the adapters out of here. And take that one out and the one on the top too. Now, when it goes into that part of the pump, that it's inch and a quarter to come out of the top is one inch. There we go. Dang, it's not. Yeah, pretty bad shape. Yeah, so we'll have to clean that mess up and all that good stuff in there and get it all back together. And right now that we've gotten these pieces out of here, we're going to take a regular wire brush and we're going to clean inside of those threads real good. Make sure there isn't anything in there that's gonna put her up for new stuff. Make sure the threads are actually in decent shape. You need that down here too. Alright for some reason this pump did overheat and it melted the plastic and the PVC and we'll take a look closer look at all that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all back together. We're gonna try to do a heat transfer uh, system here that way uh, we have a system we'll try to do, uh, get that heat away from that uh, those plastic pipes inch and a quarter so instead of putting a PVC in there we're going to take a galvanized nipple it's got Teflon tape and some pipe dough nice and easy you don't want to cross but nothing patience Start. We'll tighten that up in just a minute, and then we're going to do the same on the top with a one inch. Okay, so now you see we have the galvanized nipples going in and out of the well pump. This is the inside pump that provides the water to the home. There's another pump outside that draws water from the well into the aerator tank. Now we're going to put some fittings on here, some heavy duty ones, and get this set back up. Scheduled 80 uh, collapsible coupling, this thing comes apart and put it on the galvanized here. And we have a male threaded going into the back of that end. Now we're gonna push that down to one inch. That's what's coming from the pump. So on the outgoing that's going into the house, we have a one inch scheduled 80 slip by thread that we're going to thread into the top of that galvanized nipple. <clears throat> the reason why we're doing this is because the galvanized nipple will disperse the heat and the scheduled 80 is twice the strength of regular scheduled 40. So you can see our setup now. Heat dispersion because of the galvanized nipples and stuff. What we're gonna do now is this inch and a quarter that's coming in, we're gonna push this down to one inch. 
to match the pipe that's coming in from the aerator tank. Then we're just gonna complete the gap up here to join this one inch that feeds the house. All right, so there is our completed project and product right there. There's outside, we're just on the other side of that wall with the pump. I removed this old brass check valve. I think it had cause what happened inside too because the spring was sticking shut. And between heat and pressure and stuff in that line, I'll show you one other factor that caused that pipe to do what it's doing. We're gonna put the regular check valve in here and then just continue this over and connect it. Okay, so there's our final product. Uh, we put a plastic check valve. This is beach side here we're at. And so anything metal oxidates from the salt air very quickly. Brought it over and brought it back down and that goes into the well pump that we worked on a little earlier. So anytime I see metal plumbing outside, I try to get rid of it. The other thing that is still in here is this other brass check valve. That actually comes from the well head itself. And uh, I don't want to get into that whole mess uh, this time. So, but there you go. We're going to go back to the other side and I'm going to give you an overview in my opinion of what I think made this whole thing fail. All right, so it's time for an overview <clears throat> and what I believe happened to this particular well system and why I got the call in the first place and why the pipes ended up doing what they did. I'm gonna show you. Remember, I showed you this pipe. Now, if you guys ever seen anything like that happen to a pipe before. All right, we'll explain about that in a moment. Also, this was the pipe that was feeding out of the well. Look how it swelled. See that? It's all swelled out right here. All right. And then we had the check valve. So between the three of these, I believe it all started with this check valve. This sucker right here stuck closed. All right. So when the well pump kicked on, it was looking for water. And what it ended up doing, somebody snuck in a thin wall piece of plastic piping in line, irrigation line, just one little piece of it. So when that well wasn't able to draw water because the check valve failed and stuck shut, it imploded this pipe. Look. And it kept running and running and running, which caused the well pump to heat up and expand that piece of pipe. And that would have blew out. So that is my opinion that happened to this system. It all started with this bad check valve, wrong kind of pipe, which sucked it in, and the pressure of the pump trying to draw water, and then the heat from it running and running and running caused that thing to swell up like that and failed the system. Hey, that's all the time we got for today. I appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear about them and stuff. Um, I can tell you, out of all the years of plumbing, I've never seen a piece of pipe get sucked thin like that. I've seen it swell up from heat like that, but not like that other piece of pipe. So make sure, if you're going to have some work done on a pump, get a professional licensed plumber that knows what the heck they're doing. And follow the steps I showed you on how to disperse the heat with the galvanized nipples and the heavy-duty Schedule 80 um, fittings and stuff that we put in there. Thank you so much. Until next time, it's been Plumbing with Tim. Keep plumbing.